Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here, National Weather Service. We just experienced a very rare event for May. That is the monsoon. Or was it really the monsoon? We'll call it a pseudo monsoon. We're going to talk uh, about some of the activity that led up to this monsoonal like weather pattern and how it was very similar to our traditional monsoon. As you can see in the photos here, Cumulus clouds and thunderstorms were abundant, especially over the mountains and high deserts, and the impacts were true flooding from the heavy rain. Okay, a quick recap here of the depiction of what the monsoon is. So normally the weather pattern in the winter and early spring is blowing from west to east. This is the jet stream level where airplanes fly, and that's what brings us storms, including atmospheric rivers. Now, as the land heats up, the weather pattern starts to shift to the right-hand side. And the warm air rising and the retreating of the jet stream, the combination of the two allows for the development of a circulation called the monsoonal pattern. And that's what monsoon is, a shift in the wind direction at different levels of the atmosphere. In this case, it's a shift at the mid-levels around 10 to 15,000 feet. That eventually allows tropical moisture well to our south to start lifting northward. It's a little more detailed schematic of what happens. So typically what happens is we get heating across the southern deserts. That will create lower pressure, less dense air, and draw moisture up the California Baja and the Gulf of California. However, over the Four Corners region, and this is why we call it the Four Corners High, a bigger weather pattern shifts, and this is the cause of very hot air that develops from the high sun angle over the desert floor. The warm air rises, and you start getting a high pressure above and very warm air above the ground or the Four Corners area. Both are important in controlling and developing the flow of moisture coming up from the upper levels of the atmosphere, say 15,000 feet, or even the low levels of the atmosphere coming up through the Gulf. So what kind of precipitation did we see over the past couple weeks? You can see across Arizona, New Mexico, and in parts of California, it looked very monsoon-like with lots of areas receiving showers and thunderstorms, especially the green shaded areas where rainfall was a half inch to two inches of rain. Another thing we look at is the ground temperature, the dew point temperature in particular. That's what we feel when we walk outside. It's a measurement of the ground moisture. A lot of times in the monsoon, we'll see these values soar up in the 60s and even the 70s at times. I took a sample here from Sunday, May 21st, and you could see dew point temperatures were elevated they were in the 40s and 50s with even some 60s in Southwest California. Not quite the high values we see when it's really muggy in July and August with the full blown monsoon, but nonetheless, nowhere near dry conditions that we might normally see in the Southwest this time of year. So then I took a look at the moisture in the atmosphere or the water vapor. And you can see the tropical moisture stands out like a sore thumb, the bright red area. That moisture is typically always down there. And you can look out to Hawaii and you can see some remnant atmospheric river moisture that's just stalled because there's no longer any wind to pull it towards California. But the arrows are pointing to some of the tropical moisture that came in from Texas and moved all the way to Southern California. This water vapor allowed for that increase in moisture, especially between 10 and 15,000 feet, very favorable for our mountain locations to get thunderstorms. So the weather pattern, um, not quite exactly what we normally see with monsoon, but nonetheless, the moisture was still transported from Mexico and especially uh, Texas and the Gulf of Mexico, more from our east than south. Then I took a look at the percent of average precipitation. So was this unusual for mid to late May? The purple shade says yes, very, very much so. 
highly unusual. Usually this is one of the driest times of the year between April and mid-June for the desert southwest. And remember the sun angle is getting high and that's really what drives the monsoon is that day after day intense heating. But the opposite happened here. The precipitation was fairly widespread and much wetter than we ever see for mid-May in the blue and purple shaded area. And that included parts of Southern California, including the high desert region. I took a look at the estimated based on radar and some gauges that are available in the high desert. And you could see in the green shaded between one and four inches of rain occurred from isolated or repeated thunderstorms over those areas, covering much of the Mojave Desert, but it also extended all the way down to just near Palomar Mountain and near Idlewild in Riverside and San Diego counties. So pretty widespread activity, especially for May. Now I took a look at temperatures. So if temperatures are an important component to driving the monsoon, in other words, heating up the desert southwest, what were the conditions during and leading up to the monsoon? Well, uh, you can see California and especially the Pacific Northwest was much warmer than average during the peak of this recent activity of thunderstorms. And the desert southwest, not only was it very wet or much wetter than usual in Arizona and New Mexico, the temperatures were average or even below average as shown here. So really the opposite of what we see in a monsoon pattern. If we look even earlier, before the moisture reached Southern California, the temperatures again were sizzling much warmer than average in the Pacific Northwest in the first and second week of May. And you can see that that region uh, was under what normally maybe the desert Southwest might see, but this is much warmer than average in the 14 day period in the Pacific Northwest. And of course, much wetter than average in the Southwest because of the resultant showers and thunderstorms. The immediate coast and the desert Southwest, both green, you can see in the South and they were actually a little bit below average. So what was driving it if it wasn't driven out of the Southwest like it normally is in June and July. Well, if we look at the weather pattern during the start of the moisture transport, a massive low pressure area will stalled out in the Pacific Ocean. Those were similar storms that brought us the 13 atmospheric rivers to Southern California and the record snow and the heavy rain this past winter. This storm didn't make it here, but what it did do is it pumped the atmosphere up over Western Canada and also where all those fires have been occurring and growing aggressively. So conditions were really ripe for unusually warm conditions in the Pacific Northwest and Western Canada, not in the Southwest. But if you look to the right, what was going on in the Southwest and really what drew the moisture into our region from Texas and the Gulf of Mexico was a remnant weak low pressure area or circulation in the mid levels or 15,000 feet in the atmosphere. That allowed a monsoon-like flow to quickly develop and persist for several days, as the general weather pattern was also persisted and blocked. And that means uh, the really warm conditions or heat wave for the Pacific Northwest and Western Canada, and that dying weakening, weakening storm in the Pacific. Now, if you look at the anomaly at that same level, okay, so was it unusual for the Pacific Northwest and Western Canada to have such hot weather at ground level? And it was because of this upper level high pressure that developed first and then led to the warm temperatures, which is opposite from the monsoon. So the monsoon develops at the ground level and then that at the same time enhances the upper level atmosphere. So this was more like a monsoon or four corners upper level high pressure area, except it was in British Columbia and Alberta. Uh, and then you can see the low pressure area was a little bit unusual to be occurring in the Baja of Mexico to our south. And that was ultimately the culprit between the two high and low to draw that moisture in from the east. 
So not really the monsoon we normally see develop. And of course that typically occurs in late June and July when the desert just gets so hot and the weather pattern completely retreats to the north. Well, the activity nonetheless was very similar to a monsoon. Localized thunderstorms and very heavy rain. Here are some images of the impacts from thunderstorms in the high deserts west of Victorville, California, where mud and flooding occurred in that area, as including some road damage up in El Mirage. Whereas El Mirage was a dry lake bed recreational area in the high desert west of Highway 395 west of Victorville, here's the Bureau of Land Management entrance location and the entire area was flooded out in several locations, including here where mud and debris uh, was actively being removed when this photo was taken to get back the pavement, which is underneath this mud and rocks. Thunderstorms were strong. Uh, in fact, some areas of the high deserts and even parts of the mountains received one to one and a half inches of rain in just one hour. Uh, in particular, one of these storms very strong here, uh, west of Victorville on Saturday, May 20th. So very much like what we would see in a monsoon, except the weather pattern resulted for different reasons than we normally see in late spring and early summer. Here is kind of the detailed view of how the weather pattern when it was at its peak or we had the most thunderstorms here in Southern California. Tropical moisture was in place more than usual across our mountains and deserts. And also that resulted in the instability needed for the thunderstorms or allowing the air to rise and form the cumulus clouds. Now also very important was the wind flow. The wind flow was opposite of onshore. It was coming offshore from the east and northeast, and that allowed some of the thunderstorms to be anchored or more persistent in the higher deserts. And that also steered some of those storms towards us in Southern California, making for the view of those towering cumulus over the mountains. So regardless of how the weather pattern set up, it ended up being a very monsoon-like and very unusual for the desert southwest in Southern California for the middle of May. Thanks for tuning in, everyone.